Hey guys, Meteorology Ronald Chris Tomer here with the Sunday morning mountain weather update. We'll start with a couple of live cameras up at the top of Colorado. This is a basin up on the continental divide and as expected, skies cleared after that three day storm system and it is just crystal clear. Look at the uh, east wall up there on the divide looking really good this morning. There's your Montezuma Bowl. You can see the clear skies. You can look actually look all the way back to Breckenridge there in the back uh, on the 10 mile range. So good visibility up there this morning. Here's radar out of the west and there's just a little bit of precip up there in the parts of Oregon and southern Washington, really in between storm systems right now. Let me just give you the lay of the land on the water vapor. So let me point out what's going to happen. On this, your moisture loft is in the whites and the blues and this is going to be your main storm system that's going to drive everything over the next five to seven days. It will send a front out ahead of it, a wave that will cruise down through the inner mountain on 11, 11, and 11, 12 with a quick shot of snow for the ski areas and a lot of the mountain environments. But this main storm system right here with a lot of jet stream support will eventually move into BC and the Pacific Northwest and even brush parts of the Sierra as it begins to make its move into the inner mountain. Now yesterday afternoon it looked like it might send some energy down into the southern tier. It's looking a little bit less likely today but um, we'll look at all that in this forecast update. Here are the key dates for snowfall across the Wasatch, the Tetons, Colorado, New Mexico, and Tahoe. And just for example, in the Tetons, you've got light snow accumulation coming at 11-12, and then moderate to heavy 11-15 and 11-16. Unfortunately, now it looks like it's all going to be pretty light for Colorado, 11-12 to 11-13, and 11-16 through 11-17. Let me show you a time height forecast for Aspen Mountain ski area there in uh, Aspen and it's pretty dry. This is a humidity forecast. This is a slice of the atmosphere, all the vertical layers. That's what you're looking at. Uh, humidity forecast for about 72 to 80 hours from now and the timelines at the bottom. You read that from right to left. The drier air is it's entrenched now. That's in your yellows. So dry air all the way through and then there's a little pocket of green. You see it right there late on the uh, the 12th. That's going to be your cold front late on the 12th, maybe early 13th. Um, that's going to be your cold front coming through. But notice how quick it is and how narrow and small the area of moisture is with this. So it is brief, it is light, and it is, like I said, pretty quick. Here's the uh, snow forecast. Um, I like this for Aspen Mountain. It's forecasting about two inches. I think one to four across Colorado will probably do it on 11-12 early 11 13 and again that's aspen mountain and i think that's pretty consistent with uh, the highlands and buttermilk and also also snow mass anywhere from one to four inches of snow on the way let me show you the jet stream forecast so here it is by close of business today um, you can see the dip moving into the pacific northwest and there is our cold front on 11 11 starting to move through the interior into Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Colorado through 11, 12, early 11, 13, and then it's out of here. And then we have to watch what happens with the main storm system, and here it is, sinking all the way down through California. Then it moves into the interior, right there through 11, 16, or 11, 17. Those would be the primary impact days. Uh, and then that moves away, and then we're just kind of in a waiting game for the next storm system. All right, looking at the forecast radar, and satellite by 5 30 this afternoon there's that little bit of precip up there moving through idaho montana maybe wyoming moving through with a very light amount of snow um, then it's gone here comes our front and notice it does brush moving through shasta and tahoe with some snow on 11 11 and then it moves into the interior here's 11 12 in the morning snow heading towards the wasatch and the tetons by 11 12 in the afternoon i mean it's basically moving it's almost through the wasatch and it's moving into colorado especially across the western slope of colorado uh, by 11 13 a little bit leftover snow in colorado then it's gone next storm system you can see what it's doing this is by 11 15 um, some energy does drop down into uh, parts of Washington, Oregon, California, B.C., and that starts to move some moisture into the interior, so that catches the uh, the Sierra again. That moves into the interior 11.15 in the afternoon. There's 11.16, 11.17, and then it moves on through. Another storm system coming in from the northern tier on 11.19. You can see that slide on through. I mean, this pattern really just looks a lot like what I'm expecting this winter with this La Nina light pattern, really mirroring that storm track. All right, here's my snow forecast all of today through tomorrow. 
Um, that front that uh, hits on 11-11 uh, in the Sierra brings probably two, three, four inches of accumulation. Everybody else is pretty light unless you're up in a Baker or Whistler. You could potentially see six to 12 inches there. Some snow for the interior parts of BC as well. All right, here's the second time period. This accounts for the tail end of that cold front plus one to two additional storm systems in the Sierra, two to four less down at Mammoth, probably four or five up there at Tahoe and maybe a foot around Shasta, six Mount Ashland. And look at the Pacific Northwest BC, Northwest parts of Montana, Northern Idaho. Those are the big winners here. Uh, BC, I mean, anything in, a, in the purple shading is over a foot. So, I mean, you're looking at one, two, maybe three feet in a couple of spots. Interior BC should do really well with this. Less snow as you traverse down past the interior into Banff. Less snow, probably six, seven, eight, nine inches on that, that downward slope. So, um, looking at probably nine to 15 across the Tetons, a lot of that, you know, it doesn't all come at once. And the numbers four, five, six inches across the Wasatch, and generally, um, by the time we get to, and this runs all the way through 1119, I mean maybe two to six across parts of Colorado, northern New Mexico. So that's going to do it through 1119, guys. Thanks for tuning in here to this morning update. I appreciate it, and have a great day.